Fred is trying out for the school talent show. He wants to do a magic trick. He's going to pull the tablecloth out from under the glass and bowl and hope that they stay in place. Wow, it worked. Why did his magic trick work? We're going to look at the forces involved, but first, let's talk about Newton's first law of motion. Newton's first law of motion says an object at rest tends to stay at rest, and an object in motion tends to stay in motion unless acted on by an outside force. His law is also called the law of inertia. We're going to talk about inertia more in a later unit, but inertia has to do with mass. The more mass you have, the more inertia you have. And inertia is what keeps things in the state that they're in, either at rest or in motion. Newton's first law of motion is the reason that you wear a seatbelt. If you didn't have a seatbelt and you were, your car hit um, another car, you would continue to move unless you're acted on by another force. So that force without a seatbelt would be the windshield. So what is a force? A force is a push or a pull that acts on an object. In this unit, you'll see that a force is a vector. Force can be broken into X and Y components, and we can use that to solve certain problems. The other thing you should note is that a force is an interaction between objects. So a force can't act just by itself. There is no force of gravity if you're only considering the Earth. The force of gravity has to act between the Earth and a person, or between the Earth and a car, or any other object. The units for force are Newton, after Isaac Newton. One Newton is equal to one kilogram meter per second squared. What types of forces are there? We have a gravitational force, and we write it as capital F with a vector arrow on top and then a subscript of G, F sub G. This is the same as weight. We also have a spring force. If an object is hanging from a spring, the spring force is what pulls it towards the spring, and that's written as F sub SP. We have tension force. An object hanging from a string will feel the force of tension of the string holding it up. Tension force is can be written as F sub T. Sometimes we also see it written as just a plain T. We have the normal force. This can be written as F sub N or sometimes as just a capital N. We're going to talk more about what the normal force is, but if you have an object on a table, the force that keeps the object from falling through the table is the normal force that the table pushes back and the object with. We have friction forces. We can write that as capital F, subscript FR for friction. Sometimes we also write it with a curly F. Uh, and we have two types of friction. We have, well, actually, we have more than two types. We're going to consider three types. But for now, I'm just going to talk about kinetic friction, which is curly F, a little K, and static friction, with just F with a little S. We'll talk about static and kinetic friction later in this unit. We can have drag force, the force of air slowing something down, F sub drag. And we could have an applied force on an object, and that can be F sub APP. Now there are a lot of different types of forces. They don't always fall exactly into one of these categories, but these are some general types of forces that you will see. Now that we know the kinds of forces, I'm going to show you how to draw a free body diagram. This is so that you can look at an object and see what forces are acting on it. Free body diagrams show the magnitude and direction of all forces acting on an object in a given situation. Let's do an example. Let's say we have a book sitting on a table. I'm just going to draw it as a box. And in a free body diagram, your objects are just drawn as boxes because what's important is not what the object is, but what forces act on it. So what forces act on this book? Well, we all know that there's a force of gravity because the book has weight. The way we draw a free body diagram is our arrow starts from inside the object and it goes in the direction that the force acts. So you would not draw your force of gravity like this. All of your forces also have to be labeled. Well, if you look at this picture, we have one force acting on the book. 
Now, if that were true, then the, the book would actually be accelerating downward. We know the book is sitting on the table, so there has to be a force that's counteracting or balanced with the gravitational force. That force is going to be one you might not always think about. It's called the normal force. The table pushes on the book upward, and that's called the normal force. So we now have two forces, the normal force up and the force of gravity down. The forces are balanced. In this case, our net force is zero. The net force is the sum of all forces. When the net force is zero, the object is not accelerating. Now, it's important to know that it may be moving, it's just not accelerating. The object may be moving at a constant velocity, and the net force is zero. Let's do an example of that. Let's say we have a box sliding on frictionless ice. We have a box sliding to the right on frictionless ice at a constant velocity. What are the forces that are acting on it? Well, we know we have gravity. We also know the box is not going through the ice, so we have a normal force from the ice onto the box. And you might want to say that there's a force going to the right. But is there anything right now pushing on the object? Remember that a force is an interaction between two objects. It's moving at a constant velocity, and there's nothing pushing it right now. So these are the forces acting on the box. This is a case where the net force is zero, the acceleration is zero, and the object is moving. Now let's consider a slight variation to this problem. Let's say there is friction on the ice that's slowing the box down. The box is sliding to the right on ice, and it's slowing down from friction. We still have our normal force, and we still have our gravitational force. We don't have anyone pushing it to the right. It already was moving to the right, but now we have a new force acting on it. That's the force of friction. The force of friction is pushing it to the left. So this box is accelerating. Well, it's actually a negative acceleration because the net force is not equal to zero.